Greetings! My name's Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And welcome back to Mask of the Rose. So yeah, we're still work- it's a new season, and we're still working away at trying to get that guy free, Archie. Archibald. What's his name, Archibald? I don't remember. Which means we need to make- uh, yeah, make theories with unknowns to question witnesses, then build a final case. We're finally getting started on some actual proper fucking detective work. Yeah. An unknown did not think as humans do. An individual with undetermined identity had specific unspecified design. What? Did not think of as humans do? No, that's not what un- Whatever. Serves an eldritch purpose? I don't know. Uh, hope for vengeance. Maybe. Hope for vengeance. Um, wanted murder to succeed. Died? I don't know. <laughs> um, lied about everything. Sure. Uh, Grizz. And Rachel. I don't know. Rachel, most of all, wished for deep and inscrutable things. Grizz for some unspecified benefit. Rachel conducted experiments with various drugs. Grizz told her of a, a concoction of lies and encouragements that stirred up her resentment against David. Then Rachel blamed David for every misfortune. She slipped... David, a dose of terrible poison. Grizz wanted the murder to succeed. Grizz lied about everything. Well, that seems as likely as anything. I don't know. Ah. She poisoned David with arsenic to poison his medicine. I don't know. Ah. Question of method? What am I supposed to do here? There's too many unknowns. I'm supposed to put in unknowns so I can question people, but there's too- but they're all unknowns, so I'm not doing anything. But this, I guess. This seems most likely. Mm, what am I supposed to do? Am I just supposed to fill it with random bullshit so that I can question people on it? But I don't know why I keep jumping to, to, to not think as humans do. That doesn't make any sense. That's not what unknown purpose means. <sighs> See, that makes sense. Did not uh, serve to know for. Why are these the exact same? What? Maybe this? 
Mm. I don't know, it seems as good as any. I don't know how Milton qualifies as a motivator, I don't know what the fuck any of this is. Uh. I be about rituals a suspect. Sure, why not? I don't know why. She would. Whatever. Kiddo, good to see you. Engine raise biscuit rations. Oh. The new ration will be a large number of small or broken biscuits rather than a small number of whole biscuits. Is that actually raising it? If you want to make a black joke of it. Then all that, and not all that, the masters. Oh, that was a black joke. Okay, that totally makes sense. Give me my license to trade, or authorize me to carry on as I was, at least. Talk about the sinister nature of authority. Those who make the laws have always abused the place, keeping their own power and pushing down everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ivy hears me out, but explaining this question doesn't matter as much to her as to me. Don't mind me. Gotta notice around this morning that I'm, I'm to buy all my cloth from Mr. Vale's today onwards. Uh, why would that be, I ask myself. Artificial monopoly, obviously. Can't be he has the best price, or we wouldn't need to force our hands. Can't be it's the best quality. The notice claimed it was by royal appointment too. The notice came. The notice claimed it was by royal appointment too. The cheek. I had a question or two for you. Where I come from, we don't inform for free. You want me to remember something? I'll cost you tuppence. All right. Not like I'm using it for anything else. Fair enough. I hear you were at the Landau townhouse the day David died. So I was. Not that I knew it was his last day at the time. I was there to refurbish one or two of Rachel's gowns for her. It used to be your Rachel Landau's would never have their old gowns made over. But new cloth is dearer than hen's teeth now. You didn't see David while you were there. He was resting. Not well enough to receive vi visitors. I did see Archie arrive. He might have left his bag of medicines unwatched for a time. Ooh. But that's not what I was there for, was it? But you had no reason to kill him off yourself. I don't give secrets. I sell them. There'd be nothing in it for me. Unless you think I have such a dislike a gentleman that I'm clearing them out of the nath. Do you know who killed David? No one's made me a confession over the murder, if that's what you're asking. Not sure what I'd do if they had. I've been listening to secrets people want to be rid of. I heard of an old Naoth ritual of Halomus, and I thought it'd be a quick money spinner. But quite a few dark things came in. I don't care to be giving away every confession I heard. You dodged the question a bit though there. Is there anyone else in the household you would suspect, or anyone else at all, for that matter? You've determined it can't have been the doctor then. There are one or two feuds in that house, but none I'd see take this course. Did David have any enemies that you know of? All the world knows the answer to that. Rachel Landau put him in her novel, didn't she? Him and his jilt Charlotte and her new l husband, Lord Carringham. Oh right, that's who the Carringhams are. She has no idea the value of a secret, that Rachel. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty shitty airing out the dirty laundry like that. Even if it's fictionalized, clearly it doesn't fictionalize enough. She ought to know better. Indeed. I'm sure she's done some harm. Most likely. She's been told. Might even be that she'll start to listen now. Lord Carringham has been suffering from the whispers in his circle. All about how his pretty young wife, Jewish as was, is pining in her heart for the man she used to love. And how she regrets her wedding to a chinless Christian stick. 
All the while, Charlotte's telling him how loyal and faithful and true she is to her lord and master. But she's dressing to catch the eye of half the men who pass. And what's more, she's setting me to carry letters secretly to David Landau, telling him she's still in love with him. Begging him for a moment to speak. Time came and I told Lord Carringham the truth. Not very long before David's death, that would have been. Oh. Interesting. I can't blame you. He had a right to know. Eh, maybe not a right, but... I wouldn't say that... <laughs> well... I wouldn't say that he that he had a right not to know, if you catch my drift. Selfless of me, if you want to know. I was giving up a good client in Charlotte carrying him. I had had the dressing of her since she was 14 years old. Carrying him isn't a man for taking his own back. Weak liver in that man. When I showed him the copies of her letters, off he goes sick. <clears throat> Cast up his accounts right there with me in the room. Right there, with me in the room. Then he says he's sorry for his wife. Sorry for her. What must he do but take her away as quick as, he, as may be, so she won't be tormented anymore? Or tempted to break the vows she made at the altar, or at the font? He's got it bad, I, I see. Poor bastard. That was a treasure he found, that phrase for Charlotte's honor. Once he hit upon it, he kept saying it. I laugh with a little undertone of darkness. The joke of it faded afterward. Well, let that be. You've had your tuppence worth, I think. Indeed. Hmm. Hard to say whether or not he would have done it. I mean, he certainly seems, uh, as she said, weak livered. But he didn't seem very keen about freeing her from her torment or whatever, so maybe that would drive even someone as as uh, jelly in the spine as him to murder. But how would he have managed it is the question. The question, all right. I think Rachel is still probably the best uh, choice. Well, actually, now that uh, now that I think about it, yeah, as you say, swapped drugs for poison. Maybe he could have done that bef beforehand. Maybe maybe he could have paid off the person. Well, where did Archie get the... He said it was getting new medicine. I forget, Was he foraging for it or or buying it? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, he said he had to... Uh, the change in, he had a change in the ingredients available, and then he had to compound his own. Hmm. Compound his own ingredients or medicine? Well, I mean, hmm. But yeah, uh, theoretically, uh, I don't know. Made an honest mistake. The poorly of gentlemen sent adulterous letters. Was hired by someone rich. Loved David. Hmm. Maybe it was Ivy. Maybe she was hired to swap the drugs for poison. Or maybe Phoebe did it. Was she around? I forget. Probably. Hmm. Maybe, I mean, maybe Rachel was hired to do it, but that seems like, that seems unlikely. Motive loved David. Motive loved David. Hmm. No, that seems unlikely. Not poorly of gentlemen. 
Uh, yeah. I don't like everything. I thought she'd actually go to such length just because he was a gentleman. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, my friend. There's a newcomer to the house. Try not to assume the worst. You look solemn, Horatia. The last time was when he told us the supply of cheese had run out. I know we've had our happy little group here, but the time had come. I've taken in a new lodger. I'm doing my best to get Archie sent home. You haven't yet. We don't know how long it will take. No, but I don't think it's time to give up and move on. Just another lodger found us. I'm surprised. We haven't had many asking to lodge here since the fall. Ajit brought him around. I had my doubts about that. You should also know, he's a... A clay man, he calls it. Looks like a statue, but he's polite. And closed, before you get any notions. Odd. Clay men don't normally f uh, take residence in normal buildings. I was a clay man once. Well, not really, but whatever. His board won't come to much then, I suppose. I understand he doesn't eat, no. But he does pay rent. Even if he's the most well-behaved statue you've ever met, it's a risk. It will draw attention, and I don't see the need. Everything we do reflects on Archie now. I need someone who can do for me outside the house. Or hadn't you noticed I can't go outside anymore? I... That is, I know you don't go out much. I suppose the last time I saw you go out was to the graveyard. I don't anymore. I do not step through our front door. Why? What? Why? The trade is, I can promise you a new lodger won't do anything I don't know about. Forgive my clumsy interpolation into your domestic ideal. I wish to make myself known to you. I am... He makes a noise like rain running down limestone. I believe the best translation is moss. I hope to learn more about this new city. It is very different from my native Polydream. What is Polydream like, Mr. Moss? It is an island far across the Z. Everything has a voice there. My king, he of a hundred hearts, reigns over all, us all. But odd. Most claymen, like the uh, almost all the claymen I've met, they speak in all caps. Ah, that he's whatever. It is often harmonious. There is very little screaming. Silence isn't the same as peace. But I'll take your word on it for the moment. I hope you'll find rest here. If rest is indeed all Mr. Moss is looking for. Will you be wanting the slate off the roof for your lunches? No, indeed. Shale is a most dissatisfying delicacy. In truth, I have no need to eat. Though I am happy to watch all of you do so. What, what motivates a clay man to reside in a boarding house in the first instance? I assume you neither eat nor sleep. The accommodations would seem to be of little value to you. Griselda. No, it is an honest question. This seems a happy place. It makes a sound like water flowing through the spout of a gargoyle. Oh, I was not made for deceit. The king did not fashion these lips for lies. I sought a man in the previous city. I did not find him. I believe he was at odds with the Khans. The who? I have heard they call themselves masters now. They style themselves after their latest acquisition. But the man is gone and everything has changed. I hope to find my place and my purpose once more. Mm. We're not always so intrusive into other people's affairs. 
In polydream, we are always in union. A polyphony makes a pleasant change. I was looking for someone in the last city. Yours falling came as a surprise. There, you see? Mr. Moss requires his rest. I have no wish to be a burden. In polydream, what the king wishes to occur, occurs. But there are three of you. I will wait for you to reach an accord. I require respite rather than shelter. It will not be an undue inconvenience if I am better if I am better to look elsewhere. And he's meant to keep us safe, is he? If I were a housebreaker, I'd give him a wide berth. Besides, Hashit said he considered it, it his obligation to help Mr. Moss find a home. That it was a good deed to place him here. If Harjeet thinks the deed's deed makes up for arresting Archie, I have some questions about the moral accounting. Not everyone tallies their good and bad deeds in a double entry ledger book, Lady Griselda. Whatever the ministry may have told you. But he's right. For all to rub along here, you all need to be comfortable with our new lodger. You live here just as much as I do. Well, I can see I'm going to be outvoted. But I fear this will not reflect well on Archie. We court suspicion, and perhaps the master's anger. If I... If Archie were here, I'd say different. <laughs> I don't know. Sure, why not? I think we have room for one more. Yeah, I shall go tell Mr. Moss the good news. And let him know he has you to thank. On your heads be it if this goes awry. But I'll do what I can to smooth things over if the ministry involves itself. A shape coalesces in the attic. Or, more accurately, looms. I am sorry if I startled you. I hope we might become better acquainted. Oh my. And I have several questions regarding my tenancy here. I would have asked the others, but Mrs. Chapman was dozing, and Miss Smith told me she was, in, she was engaged in important business. I did not realize business co constituted the imbibing of wine. I have much to learn. Do let me know when I make an error of etiquette. I am sure there shall be many. I'm glad you made the journey. Yes, a great many stairs. In Polydream, the arcades curve, so that one's feet ascend and descend at gentle intervals. Marble is a common resource here as well, I assume. I shall make a recommendation to Horatia. I am afraid I did have a question. In Polydream, our king rang a hollow bronze chime to summon us when required. His favored servants all bear his own image, so both our station and our duties are clear to all. I am afraid I find the etiquette here more confusing. I hope you could explain my duties, as a lodger in Mrs. Chapman's guest house. Don't enter the basement, that is the most important thing. Ah, curious. Horatia warned me of this. She also warned me not to allow any of you into the basement. I think she thinks because I am made of stone, I can serve in such a capacity. It is not my preference, but I will do as asked. This seems in line with my expectations. I had one last question. Forgive me, but I wondered your thoughts on my behavior thus far. I hope to be well liked here if you could advise me. Tell them to bother someone else. Just follow whatever. Everyone is just muddling along. There is not much muddling where I am from. It is a state of being for boots and urns. But I shall see what I can do. Thank you. I shall leave you to your rest. Good night, as they seem to say here. A phrasing that confuses me. It is always night here. Huh, near I thought you were just gonna have no concept of night at all. Uh... Thirteen days remain in season of Yule. Thirteen, what an auspicious number. Usually I resort to the morning papers. 
London Rechristened. Exclusive toponymic guide. Annotations by Dr. Alexander Wind. Or was that Wind? refining this loved David and that X is up that that's uh amusing <laughs> as if to imply that it that she doesn't love him but no I think the idea is that she uh Yeah, it didn't, uh... Um, that she didn't, uh, yeah, that... She did, that won't be a motive, I don't think. Why? Surely the culprit would have swapped drugs for poison. Unless... Wait, hang on. Archie most of all wished for David's love. Somehow I doubt that. Why did he say patience? Loved David. Carrying him's fell in love with David. Why are they carrying him one per one person and not? Oh, apparently David doesn't love himself. Alas. TV tampering, perhaps. Perhaps. Was hired by someone rich. Uh. Hmm. Maybe. Try interviewing uh, David about this. See if he has any suspicions about me. I'd hope to I'd hope to see you again, kiddo. Without my sister as chaperone, that is to say. This is more than a social call. Let's see. I don't suppose someone other than Archie added poison to your medicine. Archie might not have had any part in it. Why poison the medicine rather than something else? To frame Archie, obviously. Surely it would be risky. If you noticed them tempering with the bottle, they'd have no good excuse. Maybe they thought it was a smaller risk to take. Since it would be Archie who hanged for my murder? It's clever, I grant you. But in that case, almost anyone might have done it. I wonder whether your housekeeper had motive to kill you. No. Where'd your... Uh, yeah. That's all? No? No, it's a preposterous idea. I know, the newspapers are full of such stories. Harmless old couple poisoned in their beds by scheming ungrateful maid. Phoebe is not ungrateful. She's part of the household. The third member of the pair, if that doesn't sound too peculiar. If there was a mistake, I could perhaps extend as far as imagining there was some recklessness involved. Perhaps Phoebe was careless. But even that appears unlikely to me. Right then, of course. Trust me, I have known these people much longer than you. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the murder? There are some things I don't understand. Better you than the news hounds, perhaps. But I'd still like to know what you can, what you think you can do with the answers. The law has cracked somewhat. It requires a touch of volunteer assistance. Why do, what is with your glasses appearing and disappearing? What? There are uniformed constables now for good reason. It doesn't fall to every citizen to try and enforce the Queen's order. I'm not just any citizen. I have a reason to be interested, and at the same time, I am not especially close to either you or to your sister. 
I am more impartial than your friends could be. David hesitates between several temptations. I suppose anything I say to you is unlikely to get back to my relatives. I trust you'll make good use of what I tell you. No gossiping, no scandal mongering, only use it in the case of truth. In the cause of truth. After that, if it paints me as a weakling or a fool, so be it. If you think Archie did it, do you have any notion why? Have you fought at all? Were you at odds? I don't think so, though I've had time to think about it afterwards. A great deal of time to think about it. Once he made some comment on missing his family, and I may have been inconsiderate in saying how happy I was in my own family. <laughs> that hardly seems cause for murder. Especially not premeditated murder. It's not even cause to throw a drink over you. In the ordinary course of things, I'd agree, of course, but he seemed distressed. Silent and brooding, like someone who was drawing deep on inner resources. Though at the time, I had assumed it was grief he was trying to conceal and not rage. For a moment, nobody says anything. He did ask if I could take him back to the surface. We spoke a little about my plans to go back above. He was very keen to come along. I didn't make him any promises, but I didn't say I wouldn't do it I either. Hmm, that's an... Right you are, I see. Yeah, all my answers are poor ones, yes. That, if anything, seems seems like cause to not murder you. With a hope of that. Unless the reason is an irrational one instead. If there was a mistake, I could perhaps extend as far as imagining there was some recklessness involved. Perhaps Archibald was careless, but even that appears unlikely to me. You know what it's like, dying of poisoning? A little. That's the part I can't speak about to Rachel or to anyone. Fortunately, it isn't what interests my visitors either. They want to talk about what comes afterward. The boat ride and the far shore and the great pale ice moths in the air. It's the suffering when I was still alive. That's what I can't get out of my head, even if I try not to think about it. Rotten luck. We have all had a great deal to bear. It's not a pleasant thing, dying. My head ached, my lungs were burning. It felt like there was a ball of fire in my gut. And then my body began to purge itself. I'll spare you the details. I think it must have been Phoebe who had to clean the place afterward. It's another indignity that I did that her. We could face such a thing, I mean. It's a terrible sensation when you realize that your body is destroying itself. That it's being damaged beyond repair. That you're going to die, but that you're nowhere near dead yet. Huh? Nothing final. And yet you're here. Hmm. I think something is still a little wrong. I think I didn't come back entirely undamaged. Sometimes if I breathe too deep, I catch a pain. The worst thing is remembering death. I wish I could forget just that. Just forget what it was like. I don't suppose that's one of the miracles of the Nea? The ability to put a memory in a safe and sink it into the, to the bottom of the Z? Not precisely, no. Maybe there's some things that can be done with regrets, but... Nah, nah. If anyone does know something like that, it'll be Archie or perhaps Milton. Not the people David would choose as confidence. So I'll let him know if I hear of a way. If I do hear of any way, I will let you know. Thank you. Don't worry, I don't expect you to be able to. But if you did, I would be grateful. Oh, that's an actual goal. <laughs> I just thought it was an offhand thing. Alright then. Let's see. Let's go. When you had passed over, what happened then? I was truly dead. I found myself on a riverboat, drifting towards a far shore. There were others aboard. Old men and women, still wearing nightcaps so they had died in bed. A workman with half with his body half crushed. Felt the companionship of all the souls that have passed that way, or who will again.
Perhaps this all this represented all the stages of your own life, which you were now leaving behind. Or perhaps there were simply other people recently dead. As for the boatman, he told me that I need not stay, that I might come back to London, if I would only offer him a small gift. I think what I saw was only a journey, as there was a farther shore. But I did not reach it. Goodbye. What was the gift? Everything is always running too slowly, and yet every day it's the same. Hmm. Make passage to surface. Uh, maybe we could view. Oh, hi. There's honey at the salon tonight. I. I don't know where they're all joining you. You said it helped last time. The pages flew out of the pen the next day. But I had to edit them several times afterwards to get rid of the cloaked stranger who kept turning up. I told you not to worry about him. He kept following me in the honey dreams. I saw him before, when I had nightmares about David's death. Oh, figure. That would be... Who would that be? The cheery... The cheery... The merry gentleman, perhaps? Surely not mirrors. No. Surely not. That seems implausible. Mr. Mirrors. Virginia says he's been seen more than once on that side of the glass. All oh, right. Yes, actually, yes. Of course, Mr. Mirrors. Because he's not... He's still around. Yet. When was it that... When was it that he... I'm not quite certain. There's some company you don't cultivate. As you like. What was that? Milton never drops, uh, offers you a drop of his favorite honey. It takes you somewhere brighter than the nap. Some, uh, brighter than the surface. Brilliant orange. My head is full of things that never entered it before. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the murder? There are some things I don't understand. Yes. You do mind? Is David answering your questions? He is. If he can stand it, I suppose I can. You were here the night David returned. So you recall what happened on the day. Right. I remember what he said. Nothing you say, of course, will reflect poorly on yourself. Plainly, David had enemies. Did you know of any? He had a murderer. That does not mean that he had an enemy. The murderer could have been motivated by some entirely unreasonable cause. You're dodging the question. I let the question stand. I've asked myself. There are our cousins, of course. They're the surface estate that David inherited. They wrote to us when contact was made again. But how would they have killed him? A poisonous letter? One reads of such things, the paper impregnated with poisons, the document that Phoebe or I brought to David in its envelope, neither of us knowing what it was until he opened it. But no, it's gothic. What was the relationship between David and Archie? Did they fight? Were they on bad terms? Not at all. They had not been acquainted long enough to be close friends, but they found some common ground. Both are great readers of elderly books. When word came of the reconnection with the surface, Archie was very interested in David's plans to return. David may, have, may even have promised to take him back up there. Hmm. Let's have to our artistic friends. Um, a 
At first you wouldn't entertain anyone who painted or sketched, or worse yet, committed acts of sculpture. He said you couldn't tell enough about the souls of the characters, and it wasn't interesting to him if he couldn't avoid a view. So he was converted out of that view by the contribution of the Solomons, especially Simeon who, according to Milton, makes all his painted heroes into a temptation and a reproach. After that, the rules against visual representation were somewhat relaxed, and the company grew more mixed. The chapter waiting for me to finish it. Look up to yourself. Honey supper, envenomed post. And to do the letter, plan return to surface, despise Archie. I don't want them. He's trying to be kind. They're an abomination unto the Lord. And more importantly, an abomination unto me. Can you make, can't you make her see sense? I don't even know what you're talking about. Our new lodger is making horrid dolls for reasons best known to himself. They have versions of us. Please make him stop doing it. Horrid dolls. Remind everyone that we have more serious concerns. Archie is in prison and the trial is in just a few days. The fate of the household hangs there. Also, you know, we're in a fucking cave in the middle of the underground and everything is terrible. I know, I haven't been able to find a way around it. You guys are worried about... Perhaps we could turn our attention to something other than our lodger's choice of handicraft. I'm paying attention to other things. I've been through the topic again and again with Harjit and with Mr. Pages, asking around about whether any of the other masters have influence. Searching through the mystery files until my eyes bleed, looking for any example of past court cases thrown out or overturned. I even tried going back to the house, my parents' house, I mean. See if I could beg an introduction to a barrister they used to know. Not that that was any use. The house was empty, and when I looked at the barrister, he was dead. Most of the barristers are dead. Lincoln's Inn fared very badly in the fall. That's odd. I come home from all that to find my fellow lodger, Archie's replacement, is to all appearances putting my soul into a figurine. On the surface, that might have been funny. But down here, can you be sure it's not a threat? Let her flounce out. I say nothing. Watch where you put your feet. You never know when someone's little clay head will catch you out. And the first of the morning paper. The headline today read... Initial exploration of sunken parliament with retrieves prolapsarian artifact, speaker's mace, jubilee crockery, mysterial remains, pig, deceased. <laughs> In other words, you found the politicians. Alright, that's enough for today. No more for today, as King's Quit would say. Feel, I've gotten a lot of information, but I feel like I'm no closer to any kind of actual solution. I don't know. <sighs> I feel like I'm playing pathologic again. Going round and round in circles. and fighting the game all the way. Ah well. Until next time, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave a nasty comment in the comment section down below. So long, suckers.